forecast, but still it's nice to see now down to 100 miles per hour, still a powerful hurricane heading aloft still north northeast at eight. The longitude line is interesting to me. It's at 81.5, which means now it's due south of most of us in the Jacksonville metropolitan area, not so much at the beaches, but in the Jacksonville metropolitan area. So what? Well, that means because it's already at 81.5 west, we're seeing more in the way of northerly winds as opposed to certainly east and northeast, which really pushes the ocean in, but even as opposed to northeast winds. We still have northeast winds on the coast, but at least um, from about Highway 17 west, winds are out of the north, and even that little bit of a veering, of really it's a backing of the winds, um, that's going to at least help a little bit with the idea that maybe just a little less of that ocean pouring in to the uh, St. John's to the estuaries over all of northeast Florida and southeastern Georgia. And at least for the last several hours has uh, moved a little to the right of the actual forecast track that may play out to lean the track more this way as opposed to this way, which would be even better for us. Um, and I'll say at the least one more time, at least that means with it off to the right that uh, through the night keeps the severe weather threat well off to the southeast and east of us. Makeda is going to be on in just a moment and take a look at some radar shots that I think you'll find pretty interesting. So remember the deeper reds here, they indicate where the larger, uh, more intense thunderstorms are. And this thunderstorm complex here, I'm by looking at satellite, is almost becoming as large as what's going around uh, the hurricane. I think clearly you can see here that was what was once a distinct eye is now tough to find. In fact, uh, this is almost deceiving. This almost looks like the eye here, and it's not. The circulation center is right there. So I think this is yet another sign. And notice the lack of symmetry. Wow, we can really see it now. So um, we're, we're looking for the idea that drier air is being drawn into the system, not only at the surface, but at about 15, 10 to 15,000 feet. And watch, especially off to the west and the southwest, loses its symmetry and really starts eroding from the west and to the southwest. That's a uh, nice sign to see. Again, pretty much goes along with the forecast, but at least we see it happening. So this will be updated at 11 o'clock. I'm not going to spend much time on that because we'll have a new cone at 11 o'clock. Uh, these are our hourly updates we're giving you on the dew point. Remember, the lower the dew point, the drier the air. The drier the air that gets into the system, the more there's evaporative cooling. And because these systems require heat, moist heat, uh, that dry air entrainment, we call it, should continue to, to cause the system to uh, weaken significantly. So weakening not just because it's over land, but because that's the dry air. That was the thinking that we've had over the last couple of days. So I'm just saying it's nice to see, at least for now, that the dry air is getting into the system and maybe even wrapping around it. Uh, even on this weather map, we painted why after a while it could be the dominant line of severe thunderstorms is offshore with what we call a dry line, really, and then heading off from us. Something else to point out, and this isn't a guarantee, uh, but there has been an increasing trend with the uh, models that we like best for this system once it does get out over the Atlantic to move pretty quickly northward. Uh, this, com this particular computer model at 10 o'clock, not only Friday, 10 o'clock Friday, not only has moved the rain clear of even you folks over southeastern Georgia, but shows a decrease in the clouds, supporting the idea of uh, sunshine on Saturday. With all of that said, we're still sticking with this forecast. So the highest risk of flooding, and that's the combination of rain and high tides, will be with the high tide we're ex pretty much experiencing over the next couple of hours. Uh, we'll wait to see if anything dramatic happens, but I think the nice sign about this high tide is that uh, the flooding, at least as far as anything widespread, pretty minimal. And because this is an accumulative fact or scenario that's developing, then that sets us up a little better for the second high tide Thursday afternoon and then what we think will be the final high tide of concern early Friday morning. In fact, that part of concern will actually end by 7 a.m. Friday. Rainfall still looking for as an average 6 to 14 inches. Maybe just maybe more of us will average closer to that lower end, which is still a lot of rain versus the higher end. Not a done deal, uh, but just letting you know what the trends have been over the last couple of hours. Still sticking with the idea that overall the water levels will rise about four feet uh, we'll have variables around the area. Just generally speaking, over the next several days, heavy rain, high tides, 
gusty northeast winds occasionally up to near 60. That's going to cause at the least widespread street flooding near the time of high tide. We'll keep you updated on that. We're going to break it down for you county by county. Some of the gustiest winds out around the beaches easily see some gusts of 65. But then on Friday now, we're looking for the rain and wind to decrease, especially as we go through the day from the south to the north. And Saturday, just a fresh breeze. It's a possibility, but that's not until Saturday. There's still plenty of rain and wind out there, and Michaela Lacero is going to check that out right now. Hey, thanks, Tim. Yeah, let's get a look at satellite and radar. Now, this is the loop that I'm showing you. This is over the last six hours. And what I want you to watch here is this side of the storm. Notice as it was moving out of the Gulf, it had a good amount of steam, but as it's moved inland, look how different those colors become. They were once uh, reds and oranges right there. Now watch as it moves inland. It loses a lot of that and that rain becomes a little bit lighter in nature. We're seeing more of those green colors and just less color to begin with because uh, it like Tim was talking about, it's pulling in that dry air and it's it's really starting to uh, lose some of its power that it had that it went when it was once over the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So of course we're going to watch it still bring, bringing some very heavy rainfall for a lot of those areas, but right now starting to uh, at least do a little bit better with how heavy that rain is for a few spots. So this is where the heaviest rain is places like Sebring are seeing rainfall rates close to three inches per hour under these uh, pockets here where you see those deep red colors. As we put a track on this, you can see very slow moving. It's only moving about eight miles an hour. Now let's talk big picture here. We've got this line of showers and storms out in the Atlantic, and we think that this area of, of development, these storms that you're seeing here, lots of thunder and lightning along with them. They are some nasty storms. It's not looking like those are going to move inland. It does look like those are going to stay off the coast and we're just going to continue with the lighter showers, but the significant storms, those are going to stay off in the Atlantic along this line right here. And we're going to continue to see this storm weaken as that dry air that we've been telling you about starts to pull in to the uh, western side of that storm system. So there are those uh, thunderstorms lining up out along uh, the Atlantic there. And of course, we're going to watch those for you, but they're expected to continue to head off towards the north and uh, not necessarily move into our area. This is what our area looks like at the moment. Still seeing one or two areas where the rainfall is coming down at a pretty good rate. So places like uh, Palm Coast, uh, that is for Flagler County, Putnam County, Palatka. Now, like we've talked about before, this kind of comes in waves. This rain comes in waves. You'll get some heavy rainfall and then just some lighter showers and then a time of heavy rainfall and then it lightens up to uh, those lighter showers. So St. Augustine under one of those heavy showers, but you've got some lighter rainfall coming behind it. Uh, St. John's as well. Duval County, we're actually getting a little bit of a break, especially in the downtown area. Brief break that is. There is more rain like you just saw. It is on the way to uh, Duval County. Nassau County a little bit on the drier side for our more northern areas. Uh, Hilliard, uh, Ratcliffe as well uh, starting to uh, dry out a little bit. All right, far western counties, not a whole lot of rain going on out there. And the same story for many of our areas in southeast Georgia, mostly cloudy, occasional gusty winds, but not a lot of rainfall there. As far as our rainfall total, St. Augustine now has surpassed an inch and a half, 1.6 inches of accumulation there, about a half inch at NAS Jacks, quarter inch in Jacksonville, and uh, Palatka over an inch of rain there. Let's go through future cast. Here is what we're expecting for the rest of the night tonight. Heavy rainfall continues to move through southern counties. You're going to get the heaviest rainfall from this system. All of us, though, dealing with gusty winds, even areas in southeast Georgia that aren't necessarily getting the rain, you're definitely going to still be getting the wind. Winds continue to gust overnight, uh, Wednesday into Thursday, and they really pick up throughout the day on Thursday. We're talking gusts between about 50 to 60 miles an hour for some areas, 40 uh, for spots along the, the uh, coast. We're seeing close to 80 miles an hour wind, wind gusts possible near a uh, Palm Coast. So it is going to be a very, very gusty day for your day on Thursday. If you are driving on Thursday, be aware it's not only going to be the rain, but it's the wind as well, especially heading over some of those bridges. It is going to be uh, pretty gusty out there. And of course, we're going to continue to keep you updated on air and online, and we'll have more details on what's going on with Hurricane Ian in the next hour.